here we are with Mr. Benjamin Lee Ichiban. Ben, how are you doing, man? How are you going, Flynn? Thanks for having me on. This has been awesome. It's been it's been a long time. I can't believe how long it's been since we've been hanging out on a live stream. About half a year ago, I think we did Lightroom last time, but uh, yeah. back today with hyperlapses and time lapses. So. Now, this is really cool. Like hyperlapses and time lapses are like something that I, I see a lot, but I don't really know how to do or do do well or do efficiently. Um, definitely seen some of yours out there in the world. They look super, super cool. So I'll run through how I did this one. This one, I, it's quite popular. Everyone on socials one wants to know how it's done. Um, I vlogged it in Japan. If you want to see how it's done, this would be considered a hyperlapse. So a basic or broad definition of time lapse is videos or a sequence of frames that is played back and is usually faster than real speed. So uh, mm. it's basically sped up video. But an hyperlapse, it's a little, it's almost the same thing, but the difference is that you have uh, the camera itself is actually in motion, some sort of motion. So mm. while I'm not actually moving the camera on the monorail, I'm shooting at the back of, uh, as you can see, I'm shooting at the back of the monorail. I'm not actually moving the camera itself, but the train's moving. So this would be counted as a hyperlapse. It's very hard to shoot uh, videos with motion because if you're trying to hold a camera, it's quite shaky, right? So time lapses give you that uh, that energy, that pace, and that movement to your shots. Um, so let's get into the two methods. So the the easy, quick, and dirty way is to shoot a video. I just hit record. It's very quick to set up. Um, you just press record and then deal with the footage later. So, so th that's the easiest way to do it. The advantages of shooting it this way is that you have video that you can transition back into normal speed with, which you can't do with the second method. So, mm. uh, yeah, there's, there's use for it that way. The second method I think we'll talk about before I go on about all the advantages of shooting it this way is that you, or well, method one is shooting normal video and speeding it up in post. And method two is uh, shooting it in photos uh, at intervals and then stitching it together later in post, stitching all those photos up into a video. So right. I'll show you how to do the first one first. Does that make sense? This is sped up video. This video itself, if you go right click here, we're in Premiere Pro, so um, I've set up a whole bunch of projects just to show you the differences between things. But basically, I set the action camera up and I just filmed a whole bunch of us driving in the snow. So I'll show you what I use a lot. It's called frame blending mode. So I think this is my secret sauce for like these. I use it quite a lot for other things, but when people saw this clip in the vlog, they they, they were more interested in this than what the actual vlog was about. They kept on asking me how to, <laughs> how, how did you do that? What, what did you shoot it with? And it's like, it's yeah. just regular video. Uh, all right, so the trick is you right click your, after you've sped it up, sorry. So this is at a thousand percent, yeah. You right click it, go to time interpolation, and then you go to frame blending. And what it does, it makes it super smooth. Um, so I'll show, I'll put, oh. The top clip has no frame blending, right? And then the bottom clip has frame blending. So I'll hide the top frame. And as you can see, it blurs all the lines. So it tries to figure out uh, from one frame to the next, and then it'll like blur it so it, it's all very smooth so right without frame blending on it, that's just how it looks it's a regular image so uh hopefully you can see it so i'll play this back uh, thanks jessica <laughs> so sped up footage is quite smooth it's it's fine i don't know if you can uh it's dropping frames all right so it's quite it's fine but um i'll show you the frame blended frame of that so you can see all the blur over here. Yeah. So it's great for motion and hyperlapses and stuff. Um, it makes everything smooth. I I even used it for this clip here, right? I'm not even moving much, but those mm. little kind of head bobbling movements, like it adds a bit of motion blur and it's a lot smoother than if you don't use it, which is, it can be quite choppy. So that's cool. definitely give frame blending a go. So the second proper uh, photo way to do it, I'll show you. I've shot a bunch of these, right? So you're basically taking a single frame. Let's go full screen. Uh, it's basic, let's go, maybe not that one. Something more exciting. All right, so this is a time-lapse. The one that I showed you at the start, um, I did this by taking 
I think it was like 800 photos. Um, wow. It's quite big. So, okay. uh, wait, I press I. So there's 6,000 by, I think it was like 30 megapixels or something, right? So yeah, that's about 30. So as you can see, it records each single frame. So when you color grade it, I will color grade a few and we'll export it. You export all these images. And then basically every 24 images will be one second in our time lapse. But you set the interval between each photo. For this this specific one, I wanted as much footage as I could. So there was only one second in between each photo. I think most cameras, that's the limit. You can't go faster than one second gap. So mm. you can go more. You can have like a 30 second or like a five minute gap in between each photo, which will make your time lapse. Uh, you can do a whole day in like, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds if you really wanted to, right? So mm. I wanted more footage. So I set this one at one second and I'm going to hold on to the arrow key. And basically, I don't know how it's showing. Uh, Looks good. <laughs> this is the whole <laughs> video. <too> well. Yeah. <laughs> because you have so much resolution, you can digitally pan, zoom in and... All right, so I'll show you this one. Uh, I okay. digitally yeah. zoom in. So there's you add, you can fake some motion. You can uh, just crop it and have a more zoomed in um, time lapse. Yeah. So it gives you more room to play around with creatively, I think. So uh, let's go to this one. So I shot this in Texas. That was a test shot. Texas in the middle of nowhere. So I just needed some uh, astro time lapse footage as transitions for a project that I was shooting on. So uh, each photo is 30 seconds long. So this took hours and hours to shoot. So the shutter stayed open for 30 seconds and took a shot. And then there was one second uh, break and then did it all over again. So mm. if you can see the, um, the settings at the top, 1600, I shot on 18 mils. It's uh, F 2.8 at 30 seconds. So um, I'm going to hold on to the arrow key just to scrub through it to show you how it looks. Um, yeah, that's wow. Yeah, it's losing its solution. So long time lapse. I went back in and I slept and I left my camera outside to do its the, the <laughs> thing. So that was good. But uh, basically, this is how you would edit it. Go into edit. Um, I don't know how you like to edit your stars. Let's just do a quick edit. Um, I'm going to do a tone curve preset. Experiment before you actually have to shoot a real, like a proper time lapse for a page job or whatever. You need to learn the ins and outs and make sure yeah. you dial in the settings are correct. I'm just going to drop a quick edit on this. All right. So basically, because it's at nighttime, the exposure doesn't really change. The clouds come in a little bit towards the end. But um, basically, the it's like same exposure throughout the whole thing. So what you mm. can do is edit one photo. This is a very poor job of me editing it, but like for time's sake, uh, <laughs> let's just say I like I like this, we'll drop the clarity a little bit. All right, so then, give me a second. You click that one, and then you click the end of your time lapse. Uh, hold shift, All right? So I've already marked it out. Hold shift, and then this comes out, right? So you can sync settings. Um, sync settings, and then it asks you what you want to sync. So if, in this case, because the camera was on a tripod, it doesn't actually move. Uh, I want the same crop. You just uh, synchronize and you hit synchronize. So I've already done this uh, literally previously. Everything. So. <laughs> yeah. And then it'll copy the first one, the one that you have highlighted throughout all your photos. And it'll be the same edit throughout. If you look at it now, um, the, the size will actually be bigger than uh, 4K. So 4K is 38, yeah. 40 by... Yeah, yeah. So what you can do after you've done all that, right? I'm going to... You selected it all, it's still all selected. I'm going to export, so shift, command, or control E. Comes up here, right? So uh, you can resize it to export as 4K. So you click here, resize, and you 3840 by 2140. Whatever the 4K resolution is, you can input yeah, it Yeah, I here can never remember it. To off, make sure off, it spits out the right either. size. <laughs> I have to Google all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So. You can do that or you can spit out a big file and then you can deal with it later in uh, Premiere. But sometimes like depending on your computer, it may choke your computer because the size is so big. So yeah, 4K is already on the limit for a lot of computers, but this might save you. You need to export it so the, the files 
file naming system is very clear for the computer. So it has to have a sequential um, numbering system, I guess. Mm. You go to custom settings, uh, edit, and what I've chosen is just to, like I'll delete it, just sequence. So it'll, it'll go from zero, 01 to 270, whatever, mm. whatever file you're using, right? When you hit export, a dialog box will pop up. All right, and it'll ask you where you want to save it, and then you choose a folder because you're going to have like 300 files. So don't save it to your desktop because it will <laughs> ruin your desktop. That'll get uh, out of control. Yeah. All right. So then we're back in Premiere Pro, ready to go. So what you do is you right click, uh, go to import. You have to hit options, which is down the bottom there, and then you select image sequence, right? Mm -hmm. And then cool. you import. It imports it as a video. Um, cool. It goes for 8 sec, 8.16 seconds. Um, we're not done yet. Uh, all right, so right click it and then go to, where is it? Uh, sorry, modify interpret uh, footage. So as a default, it sets it to 25 frames a second. So we can change that. Um, I normally edit in 23.976, right? So you can edit in 30 if you're from the US or uh, change it to whatever you want. Um, I'm going to change it to that. And then cool. you see it makes it nine seconds. Hopefully this plays back all right. Yeah, cool. So wow. that was like hours and hours of shooting and then it gets wow. a bit foggy and there, there's some mysterious light. I don't know what that is, but, but always remember to fix this uh, when you import a photo time-lapse.